Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Mike Armstrong podcast show. Today, I'm joined by Sharon McNulty, uh, all the way from Ireland. And uh, we're going to have a chat about Sharon's business and just uh, uh, lockdown and those sort of things and just see how things uh, are going at the moment for Sharon. How are you doing today, Sharon? Are you okay? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for asking, Mike. Doing well, thanks. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And uh, like I said, uh, usually uh, because lockdown's a big thing for people at the moment, I usually ask by I usually start by asking people how the lockdown's been for them and if uh, they've done any sort of particular pivoting in their business during that time. Yeah, um, I suppose I'll introduce myself first of all um, so that people get a context of what I'm chatting about. So my name is Sharon McNulty and I am the founder of Serenity Sparks Joy. And um, that, um, I've been up and running now a couple of years. My business is a professional home and organizing business. And I have recently achieved my gold certificate as a Conmari consultant. So I was trained by um, Marie Kondo and she's the Japanese tidying expert. And so I recently received my gold, so I'm delighted for that. And normally what I do is I go into people's homes and their businesses. So I help them declutter, organize and streamline their lives. And if you can just imagine, COVID restrictions have just halted that completely. So at the start of COVID, I thought, oh, I don't know how this will go. I have to say it has been amazing, really has been amazing. I didn't expect it. Um, I started off helping a young fella um, declutter his room. He'd moved back to his parents' home and he just wanted to put a wee bit of organisation because um, he didn't know how long he was going to be staying. So I started helping him over Zoom. And I, had anybody asked me how that would have worked, I honestly would have said, I don't know how effective that would have been. <clears throat> because after all, how could you tidy somebody's house yeah. um, by Zoom? Mike, it has been, it has blown me away how successful it has been. Yeah. It has, I suppose I've needed to develop a whole new set of skills. Normally, whenever I'm in somebody's home, I have my sleeve rolled up and I'm helping them. And I felt I had to develop patience and just be able to sit back and um, let them embrace it, their journey themselves. So I do, I am conducting um, interviews over Zoom at the minute and we're getting through most people's homes very effectively. So I am loving the change, loving brilliant, the change. Brilliant. So um, yeah, well the thing is, uh, like you said, um, well, most people can, can actually roll up the sleeves and do the doing, but a lot of people, they just don't have the, the strategy or the right plan in place in order to be able to organise themselves. They just... They don't think about, you know, most people don't actually have a plan for anything. They just go and do it. And actually... What I'm finding is um, people are sitting in their homes, and especially during lockdown, they're realising that they have a lot of stuff around them. And they just don't know. They're overwhelmed and they just don't know where to start. Yeah. And that's so understandable. All these items in their home have an emotional connection, either positive emotion or a negative emotion. So for them to start then getting rid of things, they're having to deal with that emotion, that's too painful. So they then think, oh, I'll not even start. And that's where the inertia comes in. Yeah. And I suppose that's where I come in to help them, just nudge them along to gently help them make decisions. And um, I will never ever say to somebody, you have to get rid of something. If they love every item in their home, they keep it. Yeah. That's the that's the golden rule. It, this isn't about having a perfect home. It's not about having a home where it's sitting like a show home. It's about having a place where they know what they have, where it is, and it's easy to keep tidy. And um, the method that I use um, isn't very well known. Um, it's called the KonMari method. It is life changing. It is, and I can say that with my hand and my heart. If you tidy using the KonMari method, you don't have to tidy again. So normally we would tidy every day, and what we're actually doing is we're moving our stuff. 
from one place to the other. That's all we're doing. And we're maybe getting rid of a couple of bags at a time and thinking, oh, this is great. It is good, but that never lasts. It'll rebound. So what, what the KonMari method does is it changes the whole focus of what you're doing. You start to decide um, in a different way. So you, you choose those items around you that you love and you let go of the rest. So anything you love or you need, you keep and you let go of the rest. So if you think of it emotionally, you're surrounding yourself with only items you absolutely love. So psychologically, that is, that's gold. That's absolutely gold. Yeah. So, um, so it puts you in a higher vibration even in your own home because all the items you have, yeah. you're letting go of the negative connotations and you're keeping all those items you love. So it's, it really is a beautiful process. So as well as, well as decluttering their, their house, you're, you're actually decluttering their mind as well, really, oh. aren't you? and their emotions. That's, that's what I tell people. I, in fact, what I'm actually doing is I'm decluttering their mind and with the, the bonus of a tidy home. That, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, I think there's time. another market uh, for you as well. There's another market for you, which is, um, I don't know if you thought about this market or not, but you mentioned, obviously, you help people tidy offices in their homes. Have you actually thought about the, because um, this is something I, I can do myself, because I do a bit of um, uh, property maintenance and a bit of Airbnb property management, etc. And mm. um, decluttering people's houses or, or actually the, uh, affecting the, the sales opportunity in the in the sales market. Do you do you go for that market? We do, Mike. We do indeed. That's very quick of you to pick up. Um, just last week um, on Friday, we heard that um, I've been working with a gentleman now whose um, wife had passed away, and she passed away several years ago, and he just wasn't ready to, um, I suppose, declutter the home. And he, he decided then he'd put the house in the market. The most beautiful, beautiful six bedroom home, massive home, um, wasn't selling. And what was happening was it was too cluttered. People yes. just couldn't see past it. So we've worked really hard and we worked pre-COVID um, in home, but since that using um, Zoom. And he's, his home the other day was under offer. So that is just perfect. So what, what we're actually doing, we have, we've also decided we're going to um, declutter homes within a week. Now that hasn't been done before because normally in order to do it so um, intensely, what we do is we have to, it, it'll take about between 100 and 150 hours to actually declutter your home. And if you think that's exhausting for one person to do on their own, so I have a team of um, people working with me and we declutter homes between Monday and Friday. Now, if the home's very big, we definitely would have it finished by Saturday and Sunday. So we would go in on a Monday and myself and my team would go in and help and go right through. By Wednesday, Thursday, if we feel we're not going to get it finished, I bring in a second and a third team if need be. So by Friday, Saturday, by the time they've put the kettle on and the feet up, their entire home is decluttered. And as you say, for somebody who's struggling to sell their, their homes, that's absolutely perfect now. So I have been chatting to property developers and real estate agents, estate agents about that, especially in today's um, market. Um, we, we want to get it as um, close to ready as we can for those buyers. So it's brilliant. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, so I've done a bit of that work because a friend of mine's a tradesman and he does uh, uh, a lot of the maintenance and stuff to get uh, properties either ready for sale or ready for um, like putting on Airbnb and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. I tend to do the cleaning and decluttering, the, the non-skilled stuff in that side of things uh, because um, he's got all the trades and, and, and we got a business together basically because I do a lot of networking. I get him a lot of the work and he then does the, the work. And I help out with the bits that I can help out with at the beginning, like, you know, the, the getting things ready and stuff. And a lot of it, you know, I've been watching Homes Under the Hammer for 15 years or whatever. And, most, and also the house doctor and the houses, uh, mm -hmm. all those sort of programs. And nearly it's always down to decluttering because people look at it and they can't see enough space. They can't, it's, it's 
it's, it's overbearing. There's not enough operational space anywhere, like you know. So, you know, so a decluttering sometimes means you've got to tidy up the place as well. You've got to decorate a bit or whatever because you you start to see bits that maybe was hidden away before. And then it's, you... it is. It's amazing once you see. And I suppose whenever you think of it, whenever you're because we we um, have changed the whole mindset. We're holding on to things we love we're not concentrating on what we're letting go of. So even if somebody is selling their house, we still go through it um, step by step. We still only concentrate on keeping those items they love. And the reason we're doing that is because these people are moving on to another home. They don't want to bring their clutter with them. They absolutely don't. I want them, whenever they're leaving their home for their new house, I want them to only bring those items they love or they need. So yes, surely we could just go in and um, um, discard a lot of items, but we don't. We still keep to the whole concept of keeping those items they love or need and letting the rest go. And that way we're setting them, we're setting them in the right path for their, their future in their new house. So it, it's lovely. It is a lovely, lovely process. A very cathartic process, actually. Yes. They're making peace with a lot of items that... I suppose we you see we keep things because what if we might need it what if gosh i can't throw that out because i might need that and, and haven't needed it for 20 years we keep items because we feel guilty we spent a lot of money on it we didn't particularly like it it was a, a panic buy or whatever but we feel guilty so we keep it and um, so it's getting past all of those emotions yeah. and only surrounding yourself with things you absolutely love and uh, another good thing to do with that is uh, there's lots of these uh, second-hand uh, homeware and clothing shops and wherever these days as well. So you can get people with their mentality to actually want to benefit and help other people as well. And that can help them to release and let go of certain things because you know, some people just don't want things to be wasted. So therefore, if you can give them a reason when it can be used and loved elsewhere... Mm -hmm. then you know they're quite happy to to do that then you know so you can it's about it's a negotiation isn't it you've got to negotiate you know what they want to well, keep and what they want to give to, to help others do you know that is so true and i i went through the reason i i am doing this as a career i went through it myself i had three small children i was working and i was spinning plates so i would spend the whole weekend tidying and by tuesday the place was wrecked now my children were so small they were just they were um, just so busy and I didn't have the time to be continually tidying and tidying and tidying. So what I did was I did this journey myself and I came upon this book actually by, um, I don't know, it just arrived in my, in my life at the right time. I, somebody told me about it and I ordered it off the internet and it arrived on a Saturday. I knew I was ready for change. I knew something had to change. And I started my own tidying journey on the Sunday and it made such a difference to my life. But as you say, Mike, I felt so guilty. I really did feel so guilty. Whenever I saw the amount of clothes, the clothes really did it for me. Whenever I saw the amount of clothes on my bed that I knew I didn't love, I knew I was going to let go of, I was heartbroken. I thought this is such a waste. Now I'd worked really, really hard to buy those clothes. I, I had gone to all these sales and brought all these clothes back. And I have to say that really did it for me. I vowed there and then. Now I, I let all my clothes go. I didn't sell them, but I vowed there and then I would never, ever shop like that again. And to this day, to this day, I have never, ever shopped like that again. So not only has it, has a, have I got a, a tidy home, but and I don't need to tidy my home, but I will never ever shop like that again. I'm what you would call now a mindful shopper. So I'll only ever bring it into my home if I love it. It never comes in the door because I've done that once. I only shop, I only shop for things I need. Mm -hmm. I'm, like a, I'm like a solution shopper. So, so if, for example, I'm going, I don't know, to a, a big event and, and, and I haven't got anything tidy to wear, I'm not like a, a woman who buys a new outfit for every event. You know, if I'm, if I'm doing something really big, I might go and buy a new pair of shoes or a new jacket. I buy it for an occasion. I don't buy new shoes or jackets or coats or, or anything until I need yeah. them. You know, 
So that's yeah. that's always my and then and then I go in, get it, and move out again. You know, I don't shop. I, I personally believe that um, the world is too consumerism, and we have too many things. And you know, I'm in sales and marketing, and I understand the fact that people are just trying to sell you more stuff. You know, you have got to be able to resist buying, like you know, even if well, it, you see, Mike, it's because I was in that position myself, I understand what it's like. And so, whenever I go into a home or whenever I'm doing it over Zoom, there is absolutely no judgment. I never once would think, oh my goodness, did you see that? No, I know what it's like. And as you say, we are in a consumer mindset. Now we are in a consumer market and it's so easy to get carried away. We're trying to fulfill a need within us whenever we're buying and buying and buying. And honestly, that, which is why whenever I go into homes, I never think, oh my goodness, did you ever see the likes of that? I know how everybody feels. I know they just want help. They just want, and sometimes it's only just to get started. They just are overwhelmed and they don't know where to get started. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and it's very cathartic to get started. I'm, I'm one of these people who, I always have a big clean out um, at the beginning of the year, you know, spring. Uh, you know, I ever do it in January as part of a new, you know, fresh year, new start, new beginning. What I'll do it is, you know, when, the, when you get that, nice first weekend or something with the, the weather's nice in spring and you think it's time time to get rid of you know all the winter stuff and pack the winter stuff away and get some summer stuff out and declutter a bit and and i think yeah. it's, it's it's good it's like a bit like a reset isn't it you know decluttering it's and i think too because because we're in our homes now so much more um we really need our homes have to be our sanctuary um you know, this has to be a place, this is our castle. We have to come in and feel, just take a nice big deep breath and think, yeah, thank goodness I'm home. But if, if we're surrounded by clutter, what happens is it, in, if, we're, if we're surrounding ourselves with clutter, um, the stress hormone cortisol is raised. So if you can imagine if that's raised all the time, our bodies are cons um, all the time at a stressed level. And if we have that at work and again at home, that's not good for us. So I am finding, especially during lockdown, it's getting a lot of people down. It really is. The fact that, that they've all this clutter surrounding them. What I decided I would do as well was, and again, this just evolved because I was asked for it. And um, I couldn't do all one-to-ones. I, ju I just couldn't fit it in. And um, so I was asked for it, a, a course. And what we do is, we, um, I'm doing a course at the moment with a lovely set of ladies and we're doing it over six weeks, six, seven, it, well, we've made it seven weeks now and we're nearly, nearly finished. And every week we tackle a category. So by the end of the seven weeks, these ladies will all have their own homes done. So it meant I could reach a lot more people in a shorter space of time. And I'm finding that that is invaluable. Here we have people that are home at the minute, who have a wee bit more time and just want to use that time um, as effectively as possible. So that's what, that's what we're doing at the moment. We're, we're doing a seven week course. It will be a seven week course now my next one. And if anybody there wants to start and declutter their own home, um, get in, in touch with me because I can definitely help them. This is yeah. the most amazing method. How and do they get in touch with you? Yes, how do they get in touch with me? Um, they can email me. Email's probably the best way. Um, as I say, my business is called Serenity Sparks Joy. And the reason I chose that is whenever I did my own home, the one word that came to mind was serenity. I had serenity in my home. Even though I still had three small children, I had serenity in my home. So, and it sparks joy. Serenity definitely sparks joy for me. So my email address is info at serenitysparksjoy.co.uk. And um, if they want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, my pages are Serenity Sparks Joy. So once COVID's over, I'm going to be able to go back into homes again. And we travel the length and breadth of Ireland. We travel over with, I've been to Strasbourg, I've been to Wales. 
um, to do it and we we were booked to go further afield um, so we will we'll get back on track with that so there's nowhere too far for us we're able to help whoever needs it just reach out would love would absolutely love to at least get you started on your journey Brilliant, brilliant. And has there been a, a change during these times with regards to people's requirements? Because like you say, there are well, people working from home. So I suppose there are people who are either in offices that are maybe they never used to get used that much. Now they're being used all the time. And so maybe they're overwhelmed or over you know, that sort of thing. Maybe there's people who are, you know, they, they, they haven't got an office. So they're, you know, they're cluttering the kitchen table or anything like that. Are they the sort of trends? you start to see? Yeah, um, I suppose at the start of lockdown, this would have been, um, I suppose the thing that I was helping with most um, was bringing your work office into your home. And it was really getting, and I suppose at that time, Mike, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of uncertainty. So you had all these high emotions anyway. And then to boot, you were having to work from home and the dog and the children and your partner and everybody was in the middle of all these meetings. And um, so that's where I would have felt there was great value in helping declutter and just putting, as you say, putting strategies and a plan in place. That's all it takes. Um, it's just putting a plan in place so that they can then um, streamline organize it because whenever they're working they don't want to have the hassle of not being able to find things um do you know it works stressful enough works busy enough and um we find that if you can put your hand to anything you need and um, it really makes such a difference we know in work that it takes a, a week out of our working um life every year spent searching for items so if you imagine we spend a full week every year looking for items so that's either the physical items or the emails or whatever yes. you imagine, yeah yeah you imagine the waste of time and the frustration so you're dealing with frustration there you're dealing with trying to find things plus the clutter in amongst you so what we do was we we would just streamline it we'd organize it plus would organize it so that this was never going to happen again they yeah. put um systems in place so that they were able to move forward and um, there was a study done in um america that said workplace stress costs around 190 billion us dollars every year and clutter clutter alone accounts for 89 billion us dollars of that that is just when you think of the amount of waste of money, it's, it actually is mind blowing. Something as simple as organizing your office can save you a fortune. Yeah. Plus, you know, whenever we do go back into the physical offices again, now's a good time to tackle it. Now's a brilliant time to tackle it. Yeah, before everyone gets back, like, you know, so I always find with, with cleaning and sorting, sometimes you're better off pulling everything out and then putting it all back again properly like you know rather than sh you know you know shifting stuff from here to there or whatever you know that's make what we do make. first make yeah that's, that's first. exactly what we do because we find there's no normally what we do and as i think i said this at the beginning we just move stuff that's all we do yeah. and we're frustrated doing so but what we're actually doing is we are taking every single page every single piece of paper out looking at it and um reorganizing it so while that might seem a mammoth task, I can tell you it will make life so much easier. So if you can even devote a couple of hours before work in the morning, or, um, and if anybody needs to, I can help them over Zoom, there's no problem. A couple of hours in the morning before work, or maybe a Saturday, or maybe stay an hour. The, the evenings are a wee bit um, more difficult because they're tired. You need to be sharp and focused whenever you're making decisions about what you want to keep. And again, the office is the same. You want to keep those things you love, surely, but it's what will help your, your company move forward. That's really what the what we would put the onus on. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, and like you said, a lot, of, a lot of things are down to systems because I teach the same things in sales and marketing. So I've got a seven-step success formula, which are the seven pillars of success, which is uh, systems, technology, 
relationships, efficiencies, action, marketing and sales. And the systems part of it is what you're doing really is, is, is giving people a system to follow and a process to follow so that they, they automatically know when they stop using this, it goes there. When, they, when they're looking for that, it's, it's here. You know, there's a system to everything, which is what I tend to use. So I, I do, I'm not one of those people who do waste a lot of time looking for stuff because I have a system to know where it is. You know, so for example, like my keys are always in the pocket of the trousers I wore last. So, so if I want to, if it, uh, if I want to go and find my keys, I just got to look for the trousers I wore like that last night. But you know, I used, to, I, I've taught, I used to have an ex-wife who had dys dyslexia, and she used to spend a lot of time looking for stuff because she didn't have a, a system or a way of, of, of putting them in places. And I used to always say to her, "Well, put your phone and your key in a set place, put them somewhere, and then you get into the habit of putting them there, and you always know where they are then because you know if they're always in that drawer, for example, then that's where they are then." in the drawer you know it's just, it's just about coming up with these uh, uh habits isn't it and i do a little bit or i have done as a sales manager in the past of decluttering with people's computers and that sort of thing because sometimes you find everything's just on the desktop you know and that's why i, um, I have a, a system of having like uh, folders filing cabinets and also in emails email folders when everything's in the folders or you know things aren't on the desktop and they're put in files and, and I help people when I'm helping them with their marketing and stuff, you know, when you create your content, put it into folders and put it into files and, you know, where everything is. And then, you know, and, and I suppose you're doing the real world version of that. That's right. And it is so important because, you know, it doesn't come naturally to everybody. And I often say my mum taught me how to tidy. And I've taught, I, I've tidied the way my mum taught me and the way her mum taught her but it wasn't the most effective way of tidying. So we're all open to learning new things. And this is the beauty of this method. We're tidying in a different way. And as you say, putting a structure there, the way, the way you are, Mike, doesn't come naturally to everybody. And it didn't come naturally to me. And I think that's why I so understand my clients. I know that it takes a wee bit of a time to, to shift in your mind the way to to manage it and that's where i come in i show them ways of it's okay tidying once and once for all and um, but the i will then show steps so that they never have to tidy again and it's simple steps this is why this method is so so um valuable it's really simple steps that they can take it's given them back the power of their life they don't need anybody else to to sort out their life for them they can do it themselves so once they know the steps and once they know what to follow what plan to follow life will be so so much easier for them either in their home or their business or both these are transferable state um, skills they can take these anywhere yeah. and we would we would use these with children children from the age of three children get this really well so anybody there that has children who have maybe messy playrooms or messy bedrooms because children love structure, they absolutely love structure, and um, they love this system. And we would work from with children from the ages of three up. And once a child gets this way of um, organizing, my goodness me, you are handing them such a powerful skill set. They can take that through to their studies once they're going out into their own homes everything and it makes life so much simpler yeah the, the other thing as well is a psychology of sale which um which means that people are more likely to trust and think uh, a business is good and their products and services are good if they look professional etc so not only can you improve performance i think with cleaning and structuring uh, a business premises by the fact that the people will feel better and be more productive but actually if they're having people over and viewing their offices and coming to their boardroom for meetings and that sort of thing, they probably improve their conversion rates. Mm -hmm. you know, That's so, so true. Would, would see that it's so smart, it's clean, it's tidy, it's professional, mm -hmm. and that's going to mean people will go with them. You know? And that's the truth, uh, because this is the face of your company. This is where people come in, they come into the door to see you and your company and having a nice and yet again this isn't about having a perfect place 
this is having an office that um, I suppose that shows off what your business does, that's easy to manage, streamlined, organized. However, whenever you do say that GDPR um, is so, um, so important these days, and that's where having a clean desk policy within businesses work as well. So if you have people coming in and you have a lot of, um, I suppose, information and paperwork on your desk, anybody can see what's happening on that. So that's where we would then create that filing system. At Once you're leaving your desk, what to do with the paperwork, how to manage it. And um, you're right. It's the face of your business. People want to do business with um, professionals. And what better way to show how professional you are than having an office that looks streamlined, organized, yeah. and as though you're in control of it. Yeah, and um, yeah, I usually ask people what was the background to, to sort of where they, they got to, but obviously you covered that with the, uh, the well-timed book, if you like. Um, what did you used to do before you got into this? That is so interesting you ask me, Mike. I have spent 30 years in the National Health Service. I was a midwife and health visitor. And um, I loved it, absolutely loved it, and was good at it. And so this, I suppose this is why I'm following um, my business, uh, because it's my passion. It's absolutely, this has worked for me. I know this works for everybody else. Now, had you asked me six years ago, would I have ever left the NHS? No, the answer was I couldn't have imagined it. But you know what? I know that there are so many people out there that need what I do. Yeah. That's how important it is to me. I know I am fabulous at what I do. And I don't say that with an ego. I say that because I know I've helped so many people. And, and what we do is the difference we make to them in one session is just blows my mind. Yeah. So I couldn't, I really, with my hand and my heart, couldn't have stayed in a job whenever I know what an impact this job makes to people's lives. And this is a long lasting impact. This isn't, this isn't a quick fix solution. It, we do it and we do it in, it in its entirety so that you never ever have to do it again. Yeah. Once I come on board, that's it. We will get everything sorted out. So you can imagine it took me a long, long time to decide to leave the NHS because for years, my mum and dad would have said, your pension, your pension, what about your pension? And I know, and I know that's a big jump to make because I, I just hadn't got a business mind, but I have embraced every single moment of it. I love what I do, absolutely love what I do. And I see the difference that I make to not only the person I'm working with, but their whole families. This is just, this is precious. It's priceless. Exactly. And, um, you know, to me, you've got to have a life of no regrets. And so if something, you know, is drawing your heart and pulling you in a direction that you want to go and you can help more people, more, you have been lots of people in the NHS, but, you know, you know, helping people with something you believe to be more important to them and more beneficial to them longer term, you know, it's changing their lives, if you like, impacting, you know, their whole life and their whole organisational skills throughout their life, if you like, rather than maybe just uh, helping deliver a baby and then moving on to the next one, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is a very important role as well. Oh, I think you... Do you know what? I, I have loved my career. I really have, with my hand and my heart, I have loved my career. I've loved every step of it. I really have. However... Any, there's lots of other people that can step in and do what I am doing. Yeah. And I suppose that's where I was pulled initially, what am I going to do? Because my business had got to the stage where I couldn't, I just couldn't have sustained working so hard in my business and working so hard in the NHS. You are doing both um, of you at the same time, you were juggling. Yeah, I was. And I knew that I was, that standards would start to slip. And that's the thing about me. I will give 100% of whatever I'm doing. And whenever I feel that I'm not able to do that, I have to make decisions. And that's whenever the decisions came about. I knew in order to grow my business, I needed to put more time and effort in it. And I, have, and I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying every moment of it. Now, business-wise, this is a learning curve for me. And I suppose I've really had to embrace the whole learning. 
but I'm loving it. I think because I'm so passionate about what I'm doing. This this changes lives. What I do is life changing. Yeah. And come here, it is absolutely fabulous. There's only, I think there's about 400 odd Conmary consultants in the world. Yeah. And I have now achieved, as I said at the start, my gold um, certificate. And that means that I'm, there's about 70 odd of us are at my level or above. So what I do, I am really good at what I do and what I do changes lives. So can, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better job. I really couldn't. Good, good, good. And how do you, uh, how do you market yourself? Obviously you've, you've gone to doing more online stuff now on Zoom and, 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 and the courses, etc. How are you marketing those at, at the moment? At, at the moment, I'm mostly word of mouth, which is lovely because that means that I've changed clients' lives in such a big way that they have recommended me to family, friends and colleagues. Yeah. Um, but now with the, with the courses we've started using our Instagram, I, have, I do webinars just to introduce people to the idea because a lot of people can do this themselves. This is a wee bit like exercise. Yeah. You, every, every one of us knows how to run, yeah. but not every one of us will run. So I'm like, I suppose if you think that accountability, that um, trainer, that's just to yeah. get you to the next level. Yeah. And that's, that's all it is. Because people will still be doing this on their own. They'll be making the decisions. They'll be organizing it. And it's just having that one person to show you the right way of doing it so that you get to the end quicker. Yeah. So you're the, uh, you're the Joe Wicks of, uh, of house <laughs> tidying. I love that. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so, so, yeah, because I was thinking, you know, um, if you recorded some of your um, theories, if you like, a bit like with exercise, if you record, tell people some exercises, some people will go away and, you know, love you forever because you pointed them in the right direction and then they go off and do it. And you've impacted a lot of people that way, which is great. And then other people want that personal trainer every week or every couple of days or whatever to, to help them push through some of the barriers that they know they're going to hit on their own or they're going to, yeah. or, or they just need that motivation to keep going because they're going to hit some bumps in the, the road down the line and need that sort of expert to, 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 to adhere to, if you like, or to listen to. So, so I see it very much like that exercise sort of regime. And, yeah. and so obviously I think if you was to um, record some of your content and also record lots of little, you know, not the whole strategy, but little strategies about this, that and the other, if you put that out on video and you put it out on podcasts and, and YouTube, etc., I think you'll help a lot of people whilst also finding and converting a lot more of those people who want you to be that that personal trainer with them through the process and not just the one who's given them some information so they can go off and do it on their own. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. And I suppose I've been so busy working with clients. I haven't really given the whole marketing a lot of thought. Um, I've been blessed in that, you know, it's sort of evolved. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I I will be. I actually have a date um, to do a lot of those videos now at the start of August. Yeah. And um I'm using that for my course, but I can also use to to put them up on YouTube at that stage. So watch this space now, Mike. Where do you see this? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you say, I got I got some systems as well, which I can tell you about and uh, help you with as well if you need help with um, things like uh, video uh, uh, marketing and video recording and podcasting and and oh, also sharing all of that on social media. That would be um, something which I would advise you to do, and not just post stuff on Instagram there, but you can get it into systems and processes where you're able to record your videos and then put that uh, a link to your videos from, from say, YouTube, etc. put it to all your social media accounts and, and therefore, you know, reach a lot more people than, than just an audience on, on one platform or the other. That's such a good idea, actually. And I suppose I'm now getting to the stage in my business that I will, I'll have to think about that. And, and I suppose initially I wasn't really... I wasn't that keen on pushing myself. I don't usually put myself forward, but it's because I believe in this process and I believe the difference it makes to people's lives. I've totally come out of my comfort zone. Yeah. 
You know, yeah. had you asked me again four or five years ago, I'd never have dreamt, never have dreamt of putting myself forward. But I know that people need this in their lives. And it's the sort of thing that they don't think they need until they hear about it. Yeah. And then they look around them and think, yeah, I really do need it. And I do think I'm doing people a disservice by not telling them what I do, by yeah. not bringing them in the right direction. And even if they're doing it on their own, that's brilliant. I'm still impacting their yeah. life somewhat. That's that's it, you know, I, I put <laughs> educational stuff on my podcast that I don't even know who is helping. But I get little posts every now and then on LinkedIn or on, on some platform that says, thanks for providing me that information or I love your podcast or whatever. And, that, and, then, and then, you know, it's reaching people. And, you know, ultimately, the more content you can put out there, not everyone has got budgets to pay for a personal trainer. But if you can steer people in the right direction and you're helping them, then, you know, so be it, isn't it? You know, you can't help all the people on the planet one by one, but you can yeah. help a lot more of them if you put recordings up there and, and just put it out there and let, them, let those people who, who need to find it, find it. And we're all motivated by different things. Some people just need the information and they can do it themselves. Some people need the information and a gentle nudge. And that's, that's how they work. So it is true. Whatever, you know, whatever people need, they will get out of this. They really will. If you can do it in your own, brilliant. But just know the strategies to do it in your own. Or if you need help, brilliant. That's what we can do. Whatever they need, we, yeah. can, we can point them in the right direction. Yeah, and I think what you said uh, just just now was really really important to people. I think if you're ch if you're chasing your own goals, your own dreams, your own aspirations, uh, and they're in in line with your true values, your true core set, then actually, even if you're not somebody who likes to put yourself up front and center, you can't help but put yourself up front and center because you know what you're doing has real value to it. And so you're forced out of your, 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 your sort of shadows, if you like, into the limelight because you know it's the only way that you can help more people. And I understand that. I've been through exactly the same process. I understand and, you know, that. I, and you're right. I had to decide that this wasn't about me. This wasn't about, and I really had to take my ego out of it. Yeah. What, oh gosh, how could I do a live on Instagram or how could I do this? And then I, I settled my head and I said, you know what? This isn't about me, Sharon. It really isn't. This is about how to make the most impact to the most people in the shortest space of time. And that's, that's what it boiled down to. It's that's just it. how, how you, the way I would look at that is how can I utilize the tools that are readily available to me to make as big an impact as I can? You know, and if, so if you believe that you're doing something, you know, to me, leaving a legacy and, and making an impact is much more important than making money. But, you know, sometimes you need to make money to leave a bigger legacy or to make more of an impact. But to me, you know, the legacy side of things is important. And sometimes you just got to realize that, you know, if you want to make a difference to people's lives, then you've got to be vocal about it. You've got to find your voice. You've got to find the tools that are available to you and you've got to utilize them. That's what they're there for. They're there to help you reach people. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I, I suppose I have to send my thanks to Marie Kondo. She, it was her, this was her method that she came up with. She has had such an impact on so many people's lives. It is just, yeah. you can't even imagine it. Um, and even the other people around it. Um, I work with um, a lovely um, colleague who's in Cork, actually. Now, Cork's maybe about six, seven hours away from me. So the community of Conmary is so, so, um, such a fabulous community. They're so welcoming, they're supportive. So regardless of who out there is um, looking for a Conmary consultant, if you look up on conmary.com, you'll find the one closest to you. Because I know your, your listeners can be from anywhere. Yes. You, we're all trained the same way. We're all passionate about it. Yeah. Um, we can absolutely help. And you're, you're, you're contributing to Con Mary's legacy by actually adopting and, and taking on people and sharing her uh, ideology, if you like, and her philosophy and her processes yeah. and systems with as many people on the planet as possible. That's what that's what she set up to do. So you're helping her. You're, you're helping create your own legacy whilst helping somebody else fulfil their legacy. You know, and yeah. at a short in time, you'll probably 
re recruit and train your own Conmari consultants? Yeah, well, I, I have actually taken on um, staff recently, um, during COVID actually. And um, because we, we know the needs there, you know, the, the need is there. And um, I suppose locally to us, a lot of people are looking at done straight away. So they want it done within the week. And physically, I couldn't have done that with them. They just would, we wouldn't get it fitted in. Um, and that's where um, my team and I go in and we complete it within the week. So that's the beauty of it. It's impacted on all those ladies who are working with me now. Um, on their families yeah it's just it really is fabulous and within our community it's not a community of competitiveness it's creativity we're all supporting one another and I know that sounds glib and you think oh yeah but we really do we have the most wonderful community of Conmary consultants and we do um, bat off each other if we have a query if we have a question we contact each other we support each other and um, or if there's a new innovation, um, we'll help each other move, you know, so that we can all embrace it. Yeah. There's not many, there's absolutely not many communities that you could say that, working communities that you can say that. So yeah. that's the beauty of it. So what I'm doing isn't only having an impact on my working career, it's great. I'm making friends, I'm making, meeting like-minded people. It's brilliant, it really is. Well, another another strategy for you would be to partner up with people who sell products for the home and the office who um, those products are efficiency type products so I don't know um, like like in kitchens these days they have those uh, cupboards where you can put your pans you know at the back etc and swivel them around and they have um, like uh, at the bottom of beds in bedrooms they have uh, these uh, cabinets with TVs pop up out of them and that's sort of the, all of those sort of products if you like those those keeping houses decluttered type products where you know they're hiding things within things you know I don't know if you partner up with any suppliers of those types of products but that would be a good angle for you would be to to, to help introduce your clients to people who can supply them with the tools if you like within their home and their office to keep themselves organized and decluttered yeah, and I suppose I have. I've collaborated with um, a couple of companies. The, um, I will only collaborate or work with people who I love their products, who I know the products can help. So I suppose even though I have been um, approached by other um, companies, I will only take it on if I think, yes, I would love that. I would use that and my clients would too. And um, that's the beauty of it. I suppose that's really what it is. It's finding storage solutions, finding solutions for everybody. And I must just say, Mike, um, storage was my thing. If I go into some of the big storage companies, my heart still skips a beat. It, I think it always will. I always thought I could keep my house tidy if I had more storage, if I had better storage. So I was buying storage after storage after storage. My problem was I just did too much stuff. Too much I storage. didn't love yeah so i still love storage i still that would still be my thing whenever i'm um, uh, have, you got, have you got an ikea near you oh sure come here i love it absolutely love you might it. like an ikea i like an ikea other stores are available yeah, stores <laughs> I are available, but yeah. I so i have more storage yeah 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 i know so yeah you're right we can and it's really about finding what and one of, one of the services i do provide is Whenever I'm in different areas, I'll find out who can take the shredding, you know, for the paperwork, yeah. who can, um, I talk with antique dealers who can value their items if they want to sell them. So it's a holistic um, approach to tidying yeah, their you, homes. You don't just tell them, like, you know, you need to do this, this, and this, but you actually introduce them to places where they can do this, this, and this. Yeah. We can arrange for donations to be taken away. We can, so I suppose we don't want to leave them with like 50 um, bin bags at the end of it and thinking, oh gosh, what are we going to do with this now? Oh. So we try as much as possible to um, to organise to have those taken away then whenever well, uh, we can. A few contacts with the man in a van and those sort yes, of contacts. Yeah, uh -huh. I know. Yeah. And yet again, the client decides what they want to do with it. If they want to sell it, they can sell it. If they want to donate it, whatever they want to do with it. Because after all, this is their items. This yes. is their items. And then what we do is we give everything a final place, a permanent home. 
And what happens is once they're finished using something, they put it back in that place. It's yeah. so simple, but it's effective. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And uh, when you're not decluttering things, what, what do you like to do with the rest of your time? Oh, Mike, that's lovely. Great question. I don't have any extra time at the moment. <laughs> COVID, you know the way during COVID people were saying they were really um, bored? I, I have been getting up at five o'clock in the morning to get everything done that I need to get done. Um, so I haven't, I really haven't had extra time. I absolutely love, love, love spending time with my family. So my daughter's home from, she was in France last year and she's home from France now during COVID. She'll be heading off um, again in the, at the end of the summer. Like, so a, like a language course or something. Or... Yes, she was at university over there. She's um, she's studying law with French, so she was doing her year in France, and so it was lovely now to spend the time with her, um, and we just would sit and maybe what very very rarely would we watch TV. Maybe oh my goodness me, I couldn't I couldn't even put it in one hand, um, but we'd maybe sit and watch one episode of something or go out for a walk or just spending time, just yeah. really um, I suppose embracing the peace and the quiet. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, that's, uh, I think we've covered uh, quite a, a, a range of uh, information there. So I think uh, I'll let you get on uh, to the rest of your day and helping people declutter their, their minds and their lives. So I'd uh, just like to say thank you very much for coming on to my uh, podcast and onto my YouTube channel. It's been great having you. Mike, thank you so much. I've really, really enjoyed it. Thank you very much and have a lovely day. Brilliant. And you, uh, nothing else left for me to say now other than have a great day. I know I will. And thanks very much for listening.